we have the venturi pump and the peristaltic pump what what are these are the main pumps that we have now there, there is a diaphragm pumps pumps and and stuff like that. But what are the main difference between the peristaltic and the Venturi pump? On the Venturi pump, you directly control the vacuum with your foot pedal. And uh, the vacuum is instant, means as soon as you push down, you also create a vacuum and aspiration. On the peristaltic pump, on the other hand, you need to have occlusion on your instrument in order to make the vacuum rise. That means practically, by the way, if you have a nucleus fragment that is in the capsular back far away and you have the Venturi pump, you just push down and it will suck the nucleus fragment towards your phaco tip, but also the uh, capsular back. Exactly. Right? So you need to be very careful if you have that. And then if so you the have a peristaltic, then you need to approach the fragment. Yeah and have an occlusion to create the vacuum and pull back, I think, yeah. So the, the event of horizon on the Venturi pump is bigger, yeah? So you can attract fragments that are further away from your instrument. And with the peristaltic pump, uh, the fragments or the membranes or whatever need to be closer to your instrument in order to, to All right. get and the proper occlusion. What are the key features then of the speed mode? With the speed pump, you now have the possibility to control the flow and the vacuum at the same time, but independent from each other. Means as soon as you have occlusion on the speed pump, you have the possibility to linear control the vacuum with your foot pedal. So it's like if once you have occlusion, it works like a peristaltic pump, right? And once you don't have occlusion with the flow, you can, you can increase the flow and then create more let's say, um, dynamic in the, in the capsular bag, thus moving exactly. the fragment towards you. In order to create a vacuum, you need to have occlusion. But as soon as you have occlusion on your instrument, it works like the Venturi pump and you have direct linear control over the vacuum. Now, I think that's very important. Once you start doing FACO, um, you need to know which pump systems you have. But th there is FACO machines out there, they have they work on the Venturi pumps, and there is one that, that, that works on the peristaltic pumps. And now each and every pump has individual advantages and disadvantages that you just need to be, need to be aware of, for example. Um, I started um, operating on the Venturi system, and I, I really love the dynamic and everything, but it, it uh, carries a risk, right? Because once you have the phaco tip inside the eye and you put the pedal to the metal, then um, you will just aspirate anything, which is a good thing regarding nucleus fragments, and sometimes can be not a very good thing uh, if you aspirate the uh, cap to the back. Probably at the beginning, the Venturi pump for the new surgeon is more logic, because you know, I'm going to press and something's going to happen. On the peristaltic pump, on the other hand, things are maybe sometimes a little bit delayed, yeah, because, okay, in order to control or to get the proper vacuum, I need to have occlusion first. What would you recommend for the beginning, uh, for, for a starter surgeon? To start with a peristaltic pump or with a Venturi or...? The good thing on the peristaltic pump is for the beginner that you can work with a low flow and a high vacuum. So you have the power, you have a good power to hold the fragments, yeah, but due to the low flow, you can keep things slow in the eye. And that's maybe sometimes for the beginner surgeon a little bit uh, easier. Right, so start with a peristaltic and then maybe work your way up. If you, have, if you have the opportunity to control the flow or increase the flow later on, so start with a peristaltic pump and a low flow and then maybe increase the flow if you want to be more aggressive or faster, more effective, right? Exactly, that because be on the Venturi pump, with the vacuum, you define the flow. That means if you use a higher vacuum, you also uh, generate a higher flow. All right, so maybe you guys want to comment, Le leave a comment which, which pumps you are using. Um, it would be really interesting to know if you guys actually um, are aware of the, um, of the pump systems that you're using. I have to admit myself that I don't really have yeah. that much of a clue about the details of the pumps that we use. I think I have some kind of clue, but it's very, it's very interesting to talk with the technicians and have it explained to you over and over again.
I think it's really also important that you you start with the setting of your mentor or of your teacher because in the beginning it's it's so much of everything that you need to care about because uh, I I just realized that I have a lot of homework to do uh, regarding the the settings and everything and I think this is going to be the next step when I when I get home. There is no end of your learning curve if you do in FACO. Doesn't even start. I don't even think that my my visual learning curve has stopped yet and uh, there's so many things that you learn about the machines and everything that you can do 